Hi creatives, I'm Rita Bearcat. It is Mixed Media Monday and guess what? We have a ton of product. I can't talk today. I don't know what my issue is. Sometimes I get in front of the camera and then I get tongue tied and I don't really know what happens. Oh, forgot to turn off ringer on that and just did it right now for you guys. So anyways, I have a fun mixed media project for you. Hi Margie. And today we're gonna start on wood. We're gonna use paint, we're gonna use art foamies, we're gonna use a little bit of collage, a lot of little fun things happening um, in addition to what we've got going on as our total page. So as always, if you have any comments and I miss them during the live, hi Michelle, uh, make sure to put them in the comments. Hi Tamiko, so that I can see them and answer them after this episode of Mixed Media Monday, yay! <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pan down and we're gonna get started. All right, so panning down, you can see I have on my desk, I've got some wood, I've got my heart wing, Art Foamy stamp. I've also got, I grabbed some paint. I've got some black. I've got this. This one is called Bright Magenta and a color shift and this really pretty pink flash. Now, I'm not a really pinky kind of girl, but you know, I know that some of you guys are. So, of course, of course, I'm going to do this for you. And let's see, I've also grabbed. You can see in this little container right here, I've got my embossing powder. That is, um, this is the dragon's egg, and this is what it looks like when it's finished. So it's really cool looking, it's really metallic looking, and I thought it would be super fun for this project. So, as always, just make sure, you know, whoops, sorry, I've got uh, really metallic looking and an echo going on here from my other... Camera, hi Mary, hi Danielle, and anybody else who joined us as I was trying to transition there. So, we're gonna set this aside. Oh, and I've also got this piece of wood, um, like a wood canvas. So instead of a canvas, it's a piece of wood, and which is also from plaid. So all of our paint is from plaid, and the wood is from plaid. This is the my embossing powders with Emerald Creek, Dragon's Egg. Oh, I also grabbed some, I've got my Art Foamy Snap. I grabbed this um, piece of tissue paper. Um, I'm thinking this is from Hazel and Ruby. I don't know, I've had this like forever. Um, and I also have this very cool stencil from Stamperia um, with some paste that I've already done with some texture paste and already dried because I figured it's a mixed media piece. We can add it on. So let's see. Uh, okay, um, I just saw that Danielle said Oh, hi, Kim. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Jenny. Oh, the Gamsol. The Gamsol for the pencils that Danielle's asking about. Yeah, I definitely would have a ventilated area because, which is why I don't use it very often. I don't like things that have a toxic smell, and it does kind of have a toxic smell to it, so definitely do that. All right, so if you guys have any questions as I'm going, if I do miss it, I, I will try to catch it, but you know, sometimes they go by really quickly and I miss it, so no worries. All right, so we're gonna start, let's start with the color shift. And somebody asked me about the Art Foamy stamp because they come with a, a stamp buddy and I'll show you what that is really quick. So usually something like this, well, it, yours will come out clean like this. Mine look like this after a while. Um, what this is for is if you're going to, if I was going to stamp a whole bunch, because somebody asked me in the Facebook group, if you, you know, when would you use this and why would you use this? If I was going to stamp a whole bunch of images or a very large image where I needed to stamp several times, what you want to do is you want to put your paint on the stamp buddy, right? And then you're going to do it this way. I always forget and I show it this way, but it's this way. You use that to get that stamp on there. So you're kind of using this as your ink pad. And the reason that you want to do it this way, not this way, is because when you do it this way, your tendency is to squeeze that onto there and you're going to get that paint in those crevices. Whereas if you just tap it on the top, it's just going to get it on the top and then you can have a really crisp image. 
Now, and somebody did ask as well is, well, doesn't this waste a lot of paint? Well, yes and no. If you're going to be doing, if I'm doing a whole bunch or a big giant project or a fabric, right? Because stamp, your art foamies are, were originally made to go on stamps and it would, you would, you would put it on there and then you would stamp your image a whole bunch of times. And if you've ever stamped on fabric, you know that you know it will take a lot of paint so just so that you have consistency in your work you can do it that way but when I am just doing you know just a couple of items like I'm just gonna I don't think I can stamp that many times on here I mean I probably could I mean we could let's use our stamp buddy um, but whenever I'm if I'm just gonna do it once like let's say I'm just gonna stamp one time I would just use a foam brush, you know, one of these. Um, and of course, I don't have one right here to show you. I do, uh, I do, but I can't reach it. Um, I would just use a foam brush, you know, one of those cheapy brushes, and go right on top with the paint. So actually, we're gonna let's put some on. Let's put some on our stamp, buddy. So this is the color shift. And I want to make sure to spread that. And of course, I'm looking for a card really quickly. I don't see cards, so let's use let's use a spatula real quick. So just something to you know not make it really bulky. So and you can use a couple of colors because of what we're doing. I'm only using one color. Hi, right, Sharon. And Danielle, you're still asking about the Gamsol. Yes, it does say odorless, and it is, but it is a chemical. And as anything that's, okay, look at, I'm showing you the wrong way. So it goes this way. Um, I, I would just tell you that just, I, I would use it in a ventilated area. Um, I think it does have a smell, but you know, I'm pretty sensitive. So if you're sensitive to smells, I would use it in an open area. All right, so we're just going to put some random images, and I actually want it to be pretty solid here. So I'm gonna hit it again, even though you could stamp it a few times and get that um, look, that distressed look, if that's what you are going for. For this one, see like here, and we'll just, let's go ahead and do another one here. Oh, that looks kind of cool. All right, so now I'm doing this side because I know I have to hit, I need to hit up here and right here. And let's do a little tiny bit right there. We'll just maybe do the do the tips of the wings. And maybe right there and right there. Yeah, I think that works. All right. So with your art foamies, once you are finished using them I would just stamp them as many times until you don't see anything left that's coming off your stamp and you're pretty good to go now if you see some in here you can go in there with a paintbrush I use this little I don't know where I got this brush from but I really really like it because it kind of just gets it out of those areas because some of the art foamies have some small small lines like this one some of them are more thick so it's not that big of a deal so it just depends and then you know it dries because it's paint so all right let's set that aside all right so we've got our our finish on here and the only thing that we have on here right on the wood is the color shift I want to make sure it's super dry before I do the next step because it is acrylic, it's dry, it's gonna dry and it's gonna have a solid, uh, it's gonna resist. So, hi Sharon, hi, hi Lana, hi Mary, 
Yeah, it is a nail brush. I just don't remember where I got it, but I like it because it has skinny on this side and then a, a thicker area on this side. So if I have a really big stamp, I can clean it really fast. And so I'm just hitting this with my heat gun. This is just acrylic paint. So it dries really quick. But I need to be sure that it's completely dry before I do what I'm going to do next. All right. So that's dry. We're going to take, let's take some of this tissue paper. I thought it might be fun. Maybe we could do some strips. That would be good. So, of course, when you're doing this, you want to play with it a little bit and move it around before you see what you like. Hi, Renee. So, when you know me, I always like to have some kind of notes, music notes on my work somewhere. Because then it's just kind of that little, little signature of, I was here. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I just think these crazy things. All right, so I'm thinking probably I would want to do this because I really want to use this too. So maybe we could do, maybe we could do this and then, yeah, that might be kind of cool. So, okay, maybe we could do this, pull this through here, pull this like this, and then on top, I can put one like this made out of, you know, like the hardy clay or something that would be 3D like right on top, which would be really cool. So let's create our background. Let's see. So right now I'm thinking, first we gotta adhere this. So let's grab, I'm gonna grab some heavy gel And you can use any any type of gel medium. I'm grabbing this heavy gel because this is what I have. And I do, if you are buying a gel medium and you're kind of going, hmm, I don't know which one or I don't know what kind of like, I would always go for the matte before I would go for a glossy. That way, you can paint on top of it and do whatever you want. You know, once you start adding a gloss, right, just like anything, once you add a gloss to something, it makes it a little bit difficult for paint to adhere. So if you plan to, you know, add to it later, it makes it, I mean, it's not impossible, but it may make you make a separate, another step. You know, you may be adding another step to your work if you do a matte. So I mean a, a glossy. So I tend to use a matte. And of course there are all different kind of brands that do all different kind of things that are all different um, consistencies. And they're all good. It's all, it's all good. All right, I'm also trying to make sure, right, I'm doing my edges because, you know, I always say you don't know where you're going to hang this or where you're going to put this, where it's going to end up, and somebody could see the sides. So the sides should just should look just as good as the rest of your canvas. So make sure always paint those sides. All right, so like that. I've got some wrinkled areas, but that's okay. I kind of like it. I just want to make sure that it's down and then we're going to this. Um, I'm thinking I need to look at it this way. Yeah, clear gesso works as well. Well, it depends on the gesso because some clear gesso has a tooth to it and sometimes those don't stick very well, whereas your gel medium, that's what it's for. That's what it was made for. Um, especially when you're doing something really thick, 
you want to do, I, I like using a heavy, and when I say heavy gel, you can see this is not runny, it's more pasty, so it doesn't have as much water in it. So I want to use plenty of this so that I know my piece is not going anywhere once it dries. And because it is gel medium, it's also paintable. Yeah, I think that'll be kind of cool. So I'm just making sure it's all the way down. And using my handy dandy baby wipe. Those baby wipes sure do come in handy. So we've got that down. We've got some right here. All right, and I think I'm actually gonna make sure I don't. I don't think I had that much on the end. So make sure those ends are. You know, of course, it all depends on your project too, because maybe it doesn't matter. You know, maybe you like it to be curled up. I don't care. Right, like right here, it's a little bit lifted and a little bit lifted right here too, and that's kind of cool. Um, so I don't have a problem with that. It just depends. It depends on the project and you know what, what is the look that you're going for. All right, so now my thought process is, because it is wood, I like the idea of kind of going with the, the wood idea, with the wood, with the surface. So, which is why I wanted to make sure that these edges are down and this one looks like it's not. So I'm just going to, I'm just using some with my finger and making sure that I get this all the way down just because of the next step that we're gonna do. And thank you for the hearts. I would love, love, love it if you guys would share. I always, uh, I tend to forget to ask you guys to share. I don't think about it, but yeah, that would be awesome. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab some, I already put the color shift there and I'm not gonna use that. And what you could do is you could pour it right back into the bottle, but I'll do that after the episode. So I'm using this bright, this is bright magenta. And I'm actually, I'm gonna put some black. This is just, this is pure black. And my palette is already dry, so don't think I'm not mixing paint here. <laughs> you know, sometimes you guys are looking at my palette going, what is she doing now? So I'm getting my paintbrush super duper wet before I start this. Because I want it to be super runny. So this is acrylic paint, which means it's water-based and I'm gonna go this way. So I'm looking at the grain of the wood, which I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but it is going this way, not this way. So I kind of want to go this way. And I'm actually thinking more water is even better. So I just, the reason why I'm watering it down is because I really wanted to soak into the wood. And so that we can still see that faint See how you can see those areas behind it? And so that's why I really watered it down. I want it to, it's really just staining the board. And actually, I'm gonna use my baby wipe and lift a little bit of this up here. So see how it's just staining that wood? Our nice pink for all my pink lovers. <laughs> Grab some more. And 
and you don't have to worry about, you know, is it going to be permanent when it's dry? Yes, because it has that acrylic in there. Whereas watercolor, if you paint with regular watercolor paint and you get it wet, it's going to move again. some of this up so you can see so I'm just kind of dabbing these areas so you can really see where the color shift is underneath and kind of did that resist so it's a pattern on pattern can you guys see that I'm not sure if you can tell in the video hopefully you can if not I'll I'll try to take a really good picture in the light to see if you guys can see it. I think you can tell in the video. Sometimes it's hard when I'm actually videotaping. So now I'm going over these areas where the paper is. And I'm gonna, again, keep this really, really wet. And I just want a hint of this black, but I want it really watered down, so while I'm dipping a little bit of it into the water, I mean into the paint, I want to keep it super wet. And I want to go now on these edges. Don't panic. I know you guys are going, what is she doing? She's going to ruin it. <laughs> come, on, come on, you guys, you know me by now. All right. All right. So now I'm going to take my baby wipe. I'm just going to kind of rub it in. And so you can see it is staining that wood. And I want to go over it again now. I'm rinsing out my brush. I want to go over it again. With that bright pink. I just want to frame it. Does that make sense? I'm framing that the square with the darker colors. Let's get some more of that black over here. And so I'm actually so let's use that baby wipe. And we're gonna continue to wipe. I need to pull that over. So I don't I don't want to make it I'm trying to rub it in so that it just doesn't look too defined. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. So it's kind of like I just want these kind of grungy edges. Yeah, that works. Yes, it kind of anchors the whole thing. Yeah, don't panic, don't panic. <laughs> okay, let's do the edges. Now that we've got that pink. And it probably would have been a lot easier to do the edges first and then do the black. But, you know, we just roll with it here. No worries. You guys... Mixed media should not be about panicking or worrying. I mean, really, what I love about acrylic paint is it's very forgiving. So, you know, if you if you mess up or something and you don't like it, let it dry and paint over it. You know, start again or add another color to it. And if it's really awful and you hate it, Gesso is your friend, you know, just cover it with some gesso and you're good to go. I kind of like that I'm doing the, I'm doing the sides darker, almost pure paint, almost, um, than the front. It's kind of cool looking. Yeah, I like that. I think that kind of looks cool. 
so it kind of makes that piece really just different. All right, so let's get a little more water and let's go into this area because I'm not really sure. Oh, that's nice. I wasn't really sure how this was going to react. And I think what we'll do on this particular piece is we'll go over with the magenta and then we'll do the opposite. We'll rub the color shift on top. So let's add, I need to add some more magenta. And actually, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a mixture of the magenta. Let's do the black and the magenta together. I may have grabbed a little bit too much black. Let me wipe some of that off because if I put that much black in it, it's just going to turn the whole thing. Yes, Jesso is your friend. Please repeat. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go. Ooh, this is kind of cool looking. So just kind of in some areas. And let's go across here. wet and rinse that out and just kind of spread it around and let it get into the, those areas because we're going to do the color shift Oops, there's my timer we're going to do the color shift right on top and then we will we will have to wait for this to dry to add another piece on top of it so when I finish the piece then I will I will put it on social media for you guys okay um, let's add I want to add some more let's add the pure pink in here Didn't have any more pink. There we go. Now let's clean that up a little bit. So what I'm wanting is for the paint to get into the crevices, right, so that we don't see the white, but we just see color on top of color, because once, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking to see if I see white is what I'm looking for right now. And so everywhere where I'm seeing white, I'm trying to get the paint in there. And that's why I kind of did it with an old brush. I didn't, I didn't use a brand new brush because this does, when you're using, when you're doing this kind of pushing the paint around like this, it will ruin your really nice brushes. So this is not the time to use your fancy brushes. <laughs> this is the time to use those older brushes that you may have, mm, hmm, not me, but you know, somebody might have forgotten to take them out of water and clean them right away. But you know, I would never do that. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we've got most of this. I'm just gonna, ooh, look at that. I'm even being able to wipe some of that off. I'm just trying to make sure that gets right in there. And since I already have this color shift on my palette, I'm gonna go right on top. And so I don't want a whole lot. I just want to get some on my finger because if I put too much, it will seep into those areas and that's what I don't want. So I just kind of want to go right on top and it'll be hard to tell right now while it's all wet, but when it dries, right, these areas will be flat and wherever there is color shift, those areas will be shiny and metallic looking and wet looking. So, and we may have, I may have to, once it's dry, when I can see it, I may have to go over on top, um, maybe another layer. I don't know. I'll have to look at it. So sometimes you have to step back and look at your project and 
you know, see what areas, you know, need more of what color or if they need another element. But sometimes you don't know that until you either walk away or you actually, you know, stand it up like this and you're looking at it straight on. Like you guys are looking at it straight on, but I'm looking at it at an angle. And so my thought process is I want to have the other element that will go on top of here, right? Another, another art foamy shape, right? Of the same shape. And it's going to go right on top of here and it's going to have all of these colors, but it's also going to have some areas of embossed, right? the embossing powder that I have, the embossed metallic on top of it too, which I think it's just gonna add even yet another element to it. And I think it's gonna be super awesome. So that's as far as we're gonna get tonight because we really need this to dry completely before adding anything else to it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this um, episode of Mix Media Monday and that you guys are, um, following me here on Mixed Media Monday. Next week we have super fun stuff happening. We've got a blog cop happening. And we also have some uh, really cool stuff coming. I have uh, an idea for a, oh, thank you Margie for putting up that stamp. That's the stamp right here that Margie's talking about and showing you guys right there. There's the link for the stamp. It's in my shop. And uh, we're gonna be doing um, a giveaway really really soon so you definitely want to be following me on social media make sure that you are following um on my channels and on yeah Kat, that's where we're gonna put we're gonna put the dragon's egg on there so we are going to be doing a giveaway really soon so you definitely want to be following me on my social media channels um i'll give you a hint youtube and instagram is going to be uh probably a big player in those <laughs> so i'm just letting you know ahead of time so anyways um thanks you guys for watching definitely be following me here next week we will be kicking off uh, a fun blog hop with the team and the team is super excited and i've seen some of the projects already and they look super cool so i'm super excited yeah it's gonna be fun so definitely tune in next week and follow me on my social media channels and uh hey join us in the get creative the, the Rise and Shine with Rita Bearcat group because you know what? We're doing fun things in there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. See you guys next time. All right. Thanks, guys.